so yeah, this to the the grannies were started in 2012. And since the very beginning, the focus has been educate, advocate, and agitate. That's been the mission. And education has always been the first one and very important to all of the grannies. And I, I'm not sure when it started, the, probably the very first year, 2013, we started donating books to the Iowa City School District. And right now, and we've continued that tradition every year, we work with the teacher librarians and they have their list of books that they would like to add to their collection. So this year, the books that we are purchasing and donating, um, this book is called The Story of More, and it's written by Hope Jiren. And I've read this book and it's, um, it's, it's just amazing. She does a nice job, incredible job of summarizing how do we get to this point? And she starts in 1969 when she was born. This is what this is what was happening. These are the numbers, and it's very readable. And then she has some suggestions at the end of where do we go from here. So this is a book for the three junior highs and the four high schools. There are two books that we will be donating for the elementary school. There are now 21 elementary schools in Iowa City. Um, so they're getting to, they get to choose because the, um, sometimes they already have these books. So this book is, was a Cald Caldecott uh, nominated a runner up or something. And it's for lower elementary and it's just a gorgeous book. And it's called, Have You Ever Seen a Flower? And then the subtitle is, Have You Ever Been a Flower? And it's, it's, uh, it's a sense, it talks about all five senses and how you can, Joan, you've read this too, and of how um, with these pictures, it just helps kids relate to flowers um, and nature in general. And the other book that they have chosen is called The Kids Versus, The Last Straw, Kids Versus Plastic. And this is also very well illustrated. All these books for elementary that just have amazing illustrations. But this one also includes um, several references to organizations that children have um, are part of and have organized and how children and around the world are fighting plastic pollution. So um, what I'm gonna do is put in the chat, the address, if anybody out there was interested in donating to the purchase of these books, we just ask a $15 donation. You can send a check to the granny's uh, post office box. And um, if you have grandchildren and are interested in any of these books, we highly recommend them. Okay, that's all I have, thanks. Thank so uh, what I'll be talking with you about today is reducing your plastic footprint. This is the Iowa City edition. So the things that we'll talk about today, why is plastic a problem? And I will share with you some of my favorite plastic product swaps for lower uh, plastic or zero plastic alternatives. And we'll talk about how you can increase your impact beyond just your own choices. And we'll also talk about microplastics and why they're such a problem. So first of all, why is plastic a problem? So we all at some point have probably had the thought that when you use something that's plastic and you throw it in the recycling bin, it'll come back as another plastic product. And, and so where's the problem? No problem, right? Unfortunately, that is not true. Only about 10% of the plastic that we use today is recycled. And uh, for this reason, and for reasons that we'll talk about plastic not being able to be infinitely recycled, um, and then also just the problem of plastic getting into the ocean, plastic pollution is, is really getting worse worldwide. By 2050, there will be more plastic by weight than fish in the ocean. So plastic is not sustainable. Um, so when you recycle glass and steel and aluminum, those are infinitely recyclable. You can recycle glass infinitely as many times as you want. A glass bottle today can come back as a glass bottle, you know, a couple months down the road. Uh, but plastic is not like that. If you look at the bottom, there are those triangles with numbers in them that we have come to associate with meaning that the plastic is recyclable. But as it turns out, um, those are actually the numbers inside represent what the plastic is made of. And also to some degree, the, the sort of quality of that plastic 
they're the grade. So smaller numbers are higher grade plastics. So for instance, maybe you have a shampoo bottle that has one on the bottom. That is new plastic. That's very high grade plastic. And then when you throw it in the recycling bin, if it gets recycled, it may come back as a yogurt container. Maybe it's a three, which is a lower grade plastic. And so as every time it comes back as plastic again, it's a larger number. So really you can only recycle plastic two or three times before it reaches the end of that chain and you won't be able to recycle it anymore. So unlike glass, steel and aluminum, it's not infinite, infinitely recyclable. The other problem with plastic is that in order to recycle it, you have to have a market for those that recycled material. And the, the market for recycled plastic is limited. And a few years ago, China stopped taking our plastics and recyclables. They basically said, keep your own trash. Uh, and so they don't take our recyclables anymore. And a last problem is that, and, and a lot of people don't realize this, plastic has to be cleaned to be recycled. A lot of people think that if they just throw their dirty plastic in the recycling, it'll still be recycled, and that is not the case. And what makes it even worse is that if you don't wash plastic properly, it can contaminate a whole bundle, which will then have to go to the landfill. Um, one more point that I just learned yesterday is that there's also another human being at the other end of that recycling stream who may have to pull your, your dirty, icky plastic out of the recycling stream. So there's a human being that will have to deal with your dirty plastic if you haven't washed it. So lots of good reason to make sure if you are gonna to try to recycle things, make sure that they're clean. So again, um, you know, if we said only 10% of plastic gets recycled, that means 90% does not get recycled. So this whole idea that, hey, if I just drop it in the plastic recycling bin, everything is okay, it's not. 90% does not get recycled. So the best thing that we can do to stop filling up our landfills with plastic and, and having plastic end up in the ocean is really to reduce the amount of plastic that we are using. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some plastic-free or lower plastic products. Now, the things that I'm gonna share with you are my personal favorites. For a lot of these products, there's now there's multiple alternatives, which is really exciting. Over the years, we've, we've seen more companies get into the plastic-free business. So what I'll share with you is my, my favorites, but there's probably more, more than one choice for a lot of these. Uh, the first one, the disposable face mask. Uh, since the pandemic has started, uh, you've probably seen these face masks lying in parking lots. If you go to the beach, you'll see them lying all over the beach. In 2020, an estimated 52 billion face masks were produced with about 1.6 billion ending up in our oceans. Uh, I was in Hawaii in 2021. If you walked, walked along the beach, you saw face masks. It was really very disheartening. Uh, disposable face masks contain the plastic polypropylene and they cannot be recycled. So trading out those disposable face masks for cloth face masks is a really good choice for the environment. Uh, now, and, and also in most cases for the, you know, if you have just those really loose fitting disposable face masks, cloth face masks are actually going to give you better protection. Now, I will say that the N95s and KN95s, although they contain plastic, they're also really good at protecting you. They're better than cloth. So personally, I think safety first. If I weren't going to wear an N95 or KN95, I'd go with cloth. Um, but I personally do wear the, the N95 to protect myself. So just kind of think about why are you wearing a mask and if you can use cloth instead of the, the, pla the disposable face masks that don't give much protection. The grocery sack. So if everybody could kick the plastic grocery sack, that would be amazing. The average plastic grocery sack is only used for 12 minutes, and then they take hundreds of years to degrade in a landfill. They also will break down into small pieces. And, you know, if you've ever looked along a waterway, you see a lot of these plastic bags in the, in the trees. Those will break down into microplastics, which will absorb toxins and continue to pollute. Plastic bags also kill an estimated 100,000 marine animals a year. 
So your best bet here is to switch to a reusable grocery bag. There's all kinds of these, you know, canvas, um, you know, even plastic, sturdy plastic, reusable bags. I always keep mine in my trunk. That way I always have uh, reusable grocery bags. I even have a really tiny one that's about this big um, that I keep in my purse. So I always have a, a grocery bag with me and I don't have to use plastic. Now, this is, uh, this is something new. I just learned this yesterday, actually. What can you do with all those bags that you have? Um, so first of all, don't put them in your recycling bin. They will tangle in the equipment. They are not, uh, they're not accepted in the, the recycling bins in Iowa City. Um, you can take them to community, uh, which is the food bank, and they will reuse your plastic bags so that they don't have to use new plastic bags. Now, here's the new thing that I learned yesterday. There are, there are multiple locations in Iowa City where you can recycle plastic bags and plastic films. They are recycled and or they're basically made into plastic lumber. Uh, I've given you a, a web address here. It's bagandfilmrecycling.org. You can go there and you can type in your zip code and it will give you some locations that are near you. I just chose two of them that I put here that are on the east side of Iowa City. And they recycle a lot of different kinds of plastic bags and films. So um, I gave some examples here on the right. If you, when you go to that site, it'll tell you specifically what each site accepts. But there's some things here that are surprising to me that I did not know you could recycle, like the plastic wrap off of paper towels and toilet paper, uh, bread bags, the plastic wrap off of water bottles, Ziploc bags, who knew? Um, and then also those, uh, those bags that, um, that cover your newspaper. So those are all things that you can, uh, those are all plastic films that you can recycle. Um, now remember the best, when we think about reduce, reuse, recycle, your best bet is to actually take those plastic bags to community if you can, if they're clean and they can be reused. It's always better to reuse versus recycle if possible because that uses the least amount of energy. Produce bags. So those bags that you put your fruit and vegetables in at the store, if you're at Hy-Vee in the produce aisle, they have these mesh produce bags. I love these. I've got a lot of these. Um, I put my produce in these and they'll just, when they go ring them up, they'll either scan them right through the mesh bag or sometimes they'll take one of your pieces of fruit out and they'll scan it right off your piece of fruit. So these are great. Um, another way to reduce your produce bags is by shopping at a farmer's market where you bring your own bags or um, my personal favorite, uh, my vegetable, vegetable person is Forrest Kelly. I got his email address here. He delivers produce to my door on Wednesdays in a great big plastic sack. And then I can give him back my plastic sack for reuse uh, on the next week. What is film recycling? I'm sorry. So film is the plastic bag. It's very thin. It's, it's called a plastic film. It's not like film for a camera, like like old cameras, it's like the, the bag is very thin. And, and actually one thing I'll note about the things that they will take, they'll take things that have some stretch in them. So if you were to try to stick your finger through your plastic grocery bag, you know, it would stretch a little before it lets your finger poke through it. Those are the kinds of things that they will take in general. Um, so they have a list of things that they won't take. Here's a list of things that they will take. So plastic film is just another word for, uh, like for instance, what's covering these water bottles. That's not really a bag. It's a plastic film. Does that make sense? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, and you said, and we could recycle them. Um, I recycle my plastic at a high V and, and that's, you mean those big bins there? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of grocery stores have the bins for recycling bags, but they may not take these other kinds of things. Like they may not take bread bags. They may not take the, the wrapping off of your water bottle covers or your, your napkins. Um, so nice. you really want to go to this bag and film and type in your zip code and it will come up with 
a list of what each of the centers accept. So you'll know exactly what you can take to each address. Now the, the high fee and fairway that I mentioned here, um, they take these things that I've got over here on the right. And then the list that I have here, um, you know, okay. some things like cereal box liners, huh, who knew you could recycle cereal box liners, right? <laughs> so um, it, it really, it's, um, makes a lot of sense to go and look at exactly which what is accepted at each location. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Great question. Okay, milk cartons. So we've all seen those great big one gallon milk cartons in the store. Uh, that's, that's a lot of plastic. And if you um, can consider switching to the paperboard cartons that you see on the right, there's a lot more, uh, the, the material that's in there, the, the paper and wood pulp, um, it can be more readily recycled than the plastic. And then of course, at the end of its life, paper, paper pulp can basically be composted. It's biodegradable, whereas plastic is, is not. So, um, the, the half gallon cartons are a really great, more environmentally friendly option. And also in Iowa City, you can just drop those cartons in your recycling, uh, make sure to recycle with the lid on. Uh, and then if you live somewhere that doesn't accept them, I live in West Branch. And I will say that my mother lives in East, in, uh, on the east side of Iowa City. She's my recycling buddy. I show up at her house with a trunk load of milk cartons <laughs> every couple weeks and I drop them in her, her recycling. So hopefully the recycling police won't get me for that, but <laughs> that's what I do. Okay, next, soda. You know, if you drink soda, we have multiple ways that we can get our soda. You can get it in plastic bottles and you can get it in aluminum cans. If you get in an aluminum can and you drop it in your recycling, guess what? In 60 days, it'll be back as another aluminum can. It is, recyclable, whereas the plastic really is, you know, we talked about how it's not, you know, sustainably recyclable. Uh, the other thing that I will note is those bottle caps. If you walk along a beach, and I'll show you a slide of this later, those bottle caps have a way of escaping the recycling uh, stream. And, and I, be I believe that bottle caps are responsible for a lot of the, the flex of plastic that we see in sand these days. So it's great if you can go with those soda cans that, that don't have those issues. Here's a slide that I used to show about laundry detergent and dishwasher detergent. My favorite brand used to be Drops and it is no longer. And let's talk about why. So laundry pods and laundry sheets have become very popular. And a lot of us thought that these were a much more environmentally friendly way to do our laundry. We were told by manufacturers that these pods dissolve completely in water and yay, aren't they wonderful? Laundry sheets also, we've been told they dissolve completely in water. However, the film around these pods is called piney polyvinyl alcohol and it is a type of plastic. Also those laundry sheets that you can buy are often made of a polyvinyl al uh, alcohol matrix with the detergent pressed into it polyvinyl alcohol is plastic. It is estimated that 75% of the PVA from these laundry pods is entering the environment in the United States every year as in the form of sludge, uh, basically. And while we don't know the full effects of PVAs yet, they have been shown to absorb heavy metals and reduce crop yields. So, um, you know, these are not as, as ideal as we've been led to believe. Uh, the other thing that I've heard is an analogy of, um, you know, if you take a, a spoonful of salt and you stir it into water, the salt will completely dissolve, but it is not gone. You still have the salt in the water. The same thing with the PVA. You can dissolve it in water, but it's still there and it's still going to cause those, those health uh, issues that, you know, that plastic that you can still see would cause. So my new favorite is Blue Land. Uh, Blue Land makes these laundry detergent, um, they're not pods, they're like compressed laundry tablets that don't have the film around them. Uh, and then there's another option I've got here that I haven't tried, but somebody in our uh, last talk brought up, Whoa Nelly also has plastic-free 
um, laundry detergent that comes in compostable packaging. Now, the other really good thing about these two detergents, there is an environmental working group that rates different detergents based on how uh, their, their impact is on the environment and also on your health based on the toxic chemicals that might be in them. Um, that's the environmental working group. And if you were to go look for these two products from the environmental, uh, in the environmental working group website, you'll find that Blue Land gets the very highest rating for their laundry tablets. And then also, well, Whoa well, Nelly gets very high rating. It gets an A rating. So these two are really good choices uh, for your laundry. Hand soap. Um, of course, bar soap is always plastic free or, or not, not always plastic free, can be plastic free. Um, for example, if you get bars of soap at, at Pioneer Co-op or anywhere you can get it without a wrapping, fantastic, that's plastic free. Another option, if you like soap dispensers, which I really do, um, Blue Land has these systems of bottles for, well, for soap and for other, you know, household cleaners, where what you do is you take the bottle, you fill it up with water and you drop tablets in it, and then the tablets dissolve. And in the case of soap, it dissolves into a foaming hand soap. That's really lovely. I really love the Blue Land foaming hand soap. And then the packaging that this comes in, that each of these tablets come in, is compostable. So you throw it, if you're in Iowa City, you throw it in your, your compost uh, bin for Iowa City, and it's, it's all compostable. So that's a really great option. The next thing is body lotion. So Plain Products is a company that distributes their products in metal bottles. What you can do is you, you get like one set of pumps or you, know, you, tell, you specifically tell them when you need pumps, you don't get them every time. You stick the pump on the bottle, you use the, the contents of the bottle, uh, you know, the body lotion, and then you send back the empties in a, with a prepaid um, label and you just stick it back in the original box and you send it back to them. And they wash them out and they use them again. So that is a, a really excellent option. They are a little bit more expensive. It's $30 a bottle, which is a little bit, it's a little bit steep. Uh, they have other products as well. They have shampoo and conditioner, and they also have, uh, you know, facial lotion. Um, so that's kind of what plain products is. Another option for uh, body lotion, there's a company called Etik, um, and I've got their web address on a following slide. They make solid bars of body lotion that you can that you can rub on your body and then they also have solid bars that you can put in like a, a, a mason jar and add boiling water and it'll turn into lotion so it's kind of like concentrated lotion so my experience with these i really like uh plain products i really like their very light natural fla uh, fragrances and they have a lot fewer chemicals in them so they're a lot better for your health um, the the body bars i'm I'm not as crazy about the ones that you rub on your body just don't, they don't spread as easily. So they're okay, but I don't, I'm not, I don't love them. <laughs> and then the ones that you can turn into regular lotion by adding boiling water, that's a really nice option. Um, you just have to be careful to use it up pretty quickly because it will mold after, you know, a couple of weeks. So you just got to be on the lookout for that. Shampoo and conditioner. I use a shampoo bar from Rare Bird Soap Shop, which is shown there on the right. I get that at New Pioneer Co-op, so it's plastic free, and I love it. I like this bar as much as my regular shampoo. It's fantastic. Um, at New Pioneer Co-op, you can also get conditioning bars for your hair. Uh, I've been trying the Sunleaf Conditioner Bar. I just started using it a few days ago, and it's pretty okay. I'm not as crazy about it as my regular conditioner, um, but, but it's pretty decent. A teak, which I mentioned on the previous slide that has a lot of different bars. They also have shampoo and conditioner bars that are nice. I really like a teak's conditioning bars. Uh, the downside of a teak is the bars are a little more expensive. They're like $15 each, whereas the ones above are like nine or $10 and you have to get them uh, through the mail, which may add, depending on how much you buy, may add a little bit more cost. 
Atik also has, uh, I mentioned lotion bars, they also have deodorant bars. So they're a great plastic free company. Um, and again, uh, I mentioned Plain on the previous slide. They also do shampoo and conditioner, uh, but I haven't actually tried it, although a friend of mine has, and she says it's pretty nice. So my experience with these is that uh, the shampoo and conditioner bars, they are a little more expensive, but they last a lot longer than a bottle of shampoo. So I think cost-wise, they come out about even. And for me, using the Rare Bird Soap Shop shampoo bar and the Atik conditioning bar, I like those as much as my uh, as my usual, um, you know, in the bottle shampoo, or what used to be my usual, I should say, because it's not anymore. <laughs> All right, so now just pausing for a moment, we'll talk about more swaps in a moment, uh, but just want you guys to think about if there's one swap that you could make this week and what other swaps might look interesting. So some tips for trying new products. Consider starting with the large impact swaps first, like plastic bags and milk bottles and pop bottles and laundry detergent. And then if you're gonna do a swap of a personal care item, think about starting to try that before you've used up your, your, your old version of your personal care item. So that way, if you don't like the swap, you can fall back on your, your previous thing that you were using um, and then look for something else that you might like better. And then last, you know, just be gentle on yourself. You don't have to do 100% replacement. If you're using a plastic-free product 50% of the time, you're still saving 50% of the plastic. So just keep that in mind. And on to more swaps. Dental floss. Dental lace is my favorite. I love this one. It comes in these cute little glass vials. Uh, it's mailed to you in compostable packaging. So you just throw all the, all the packaging in the compost. Um, in Iowa City, you know, the industrial composting. The other good thing about this dental floss is that the, if you get the waxed version, the wax is not, not petroleum-based. If you use a, uh, a typical dental floss from the grocery store and it's, and it's waxed, it's usually going to be a petroleum-based wax which is carcinogenic, and you're putting that in your mouth, which is, I, I found that to be um, frightening when I learned that. And so as soon as I got dental lace, I threw out all my old dental floss and never used it again. For toothbrush and toothpaste, I will be honest, I have not found a toothpaste bit that I love. I, I'm not crazy about them. I use them sometimes but not all the time, probably about 25% of the time because I just don't like them. The ones that I've tried, um, bite toothpaste bits get really good ratings and, um, and a lot of people do use those. I'm not crazy about them. Um, Georganics, I think it's called, is a um, one that I found that it's basically baking soda and like a mint extract that so leaves your mouth feeling really minty. They're okay. I use those more often than the bite toothpaste bits. Um, and then for toothbrushes, uh, there's toothbrushes usually, the bamboo toothbrushes usually come in cardboard packaging. And uh, most bamboo toothbrushes still have bristles that are not biodegradable. So before you compost the, the handle, make sure you pull those, br those uh, bristles out. Um, I've tried a lot of different kinds of bamboo toothbrushes and I've only found one that I like, which is actually comes from Bite, which is the company that makes those toothpaste bits. Um, I find that the bristles are, are firmer on this toothbrush. So I really like the Bite toothpaste bits brush. Um, one last warning that I wanna give you if you're gonna look at toothpaste tablets, look at the ingredients tablets that have silica in them can scratch your enamel. So beware of that if you're going to look at toothpaste bits. For deodorant, I like Island deodorant. It's, um, they have an organic deodorant that is in a totally compostable tube. So when you're done with it, you just toss it in the compost, which is amazing. It's also, it's a deodorant not an antiperspirant, does not have aluminum in it. So it's actually better for your health than most, you know, store-bought deodorant antiperspirants. Uh, there's a brand called Native that also has a non-plastic version now. And uh, so my experience with these, I've tried a couple 
deodorants. Uh, and I think it's the probiotics in the island deodorant that makes it actually work. I've tried some, some other non-plastic deodorants that honestly <laughs> just didn't work. So this is my, this is my favorite. I will note that it is more expensive than the non-plastic version. It's about, I think it's $15 a tube, um, but yay planet. For toilet paper, we've all seen the toilet paper in the store that's you know wrapped in plastic and then bundles of the plastic packages are wrapped in more plastic. A lot of plastic wrapped around our toilet paper. My favorite plastic free version of toilet paper is who gives a crap? I have this shipped to my door. I have a subscription. It arrives every, I think, three months and I get 50 rolls. It's wrapped in paper and half of the proceeds of this toilet paper go to help build toilets in other underprivileged countries, which helps them with their sanitation. Uh, their toilet paper is made either from recycled paper. There's recycled paper variety or bamboo variety. Um, now, I'm not crazy about recycled paper because although I think it's a great idea, it helps give, you, give us a place for recycled paper to go. I find that it falls apart and I'm not crazy about it. Uh, I do like the bamboo toilet paper. The advantage of bamboo being that we're not cutting down virgin forests to make toilet paper. Uh, bamboo grows a lot more quickly and is a lot more sustainable than cutting down trees. So this is just a quick view of my uh, toiletries routine. I've eliminated a lot of the plastic that used to be in my toiletries routine, although you can still see I've still got the toothpaste <laughs> um, and I've still got a couple things that have got a little bit of plastic in there, but I've made a lot of progress. So I encourage you all to, to give it a try. Okay, and now we're moving on to the expand your impact section. And uh, one of the most inspirational quotes that I've ever heard is from Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. And you'll be surprised that the changes that you make can influence other people in ways that you never expected. So if you've done all that you can to clean up your plastic footprint, um, I want to share with you just a story about how your choices might actually go beyond your, uh, your own impact and how you can think about going beyond your own impact. So I want to share with you the story of the Crandic run. That's a, a run between Cedar Rapids and Iowa City and the compostable cup. So back in April of 2019, uh, before the pandemic, some of my, uh, the members of my company, um, my coworkers and I volunteered to hand out water at the Crandic run. And when the Crandic run was over, we were told to put all the extra cups that were, they were paper cups, and we were told to put them in special bags so that they could be composted. And I thought, wow, somebody who made this decision to have compostable cups and compost them when done saved about 10,000 cups from going to the landfill. And I thought, that's pretty neat that one person made this decision that had such a big impact. And that got me thinking, hey, what, what could I do that would have a bigger impact than just my own choices? So my company used to, before the pandemic, run a coding garage for teenage students where um, we would teach them in the evenings and summer how to make phone apps, how to write the code for that. And we also uh, fed them pizza or sandwiches. Basically, we fed them dinner. They could have soda or bottled water. And I was wondering, you know, hey, couldn't we get rid of those water bottles? Uh -huh. So I reached out to my friend, Danielle, who was the organizer. I said, hey, Danielle, could we swap out those water bottles and can we use compostable cups and jugs of ice water instead? And she said, sure, yes. And how about if we compost the pizza boxes and all the plates and all the napkins? <laughs> So together, we basically turned what used to be mounds of garbage at the end of these workshops into virtually no garbage. We eliminated plastic bottles. We composted all the pizza, bo the pizza boxes and the plates. And we even, as we did this, we taught the high school students why we were doing this. And two of them were inspired, two of the teams were inspired to make um, green apps basically with an environmental focus. So that was really exciting that not only had we made this 
good step for the environment, but we had also inspired some students along the way. And then we decided, hey, let's, um, could we take our philanthropy committee and turn it into a sustainability committee and start doing sustainability things at our work? So then we, uh, we started targeting our company lunches and we, um, until the pandemic hit, <laughs> we had a couple company lunches uh, monthly that they brought in food and, and we ate those on plates with, you know, plastic silverware and, and napkins. And we started composting, um, you know, the plates and napkins from our lunch. And then I was also taking minutes at a board at the community board meetings. And um, I said, hey, could we start composting the plates and napkins? And, and I started bringing silverware that they like real silverware that they could use for these dinners. And then I could wash afterwards. And then my mom saw this and she was inspired. And she said, hey, I could do that at my Rotary Club. So they started using real plates that they would wash in the dishwasher. And my mom would take silverware that they would use and she'd bring it home afterwards and wash it. And then we we're on a kick, right? We're doing all this great environmental stuff. And we said, hey, what else could we do? <laughs> and that's where the solar panel project came in. So just think about this, this one decision that somebody made to have compostable cups at the Cranick Run basically was the, the catalyst that inspired all these things. So my message to you is your choices make a difference. Talk about your choices with people, share your choices with people, inspire people, and then also think about ways that you can, you can expand your impact in your life to your group activities and your friends and the people around you. So greening up your group activities, what can you do there? What groups are you a part of? Do you serve meals? Can you compost plates and napkins? Can you do something to make to reduce the single use disposables there? Does your group do service projects? Can you do an environmental project? You know, the great thing about working in groups is that you leverage the skills and talents of so many people that, and you know, it's more than you can do by yourself. And I encourage everybody to think about joining an environmental group. So I've got a couple here. We have notably the 100 grannies, yay grannies, <laughs> to educate, advocate, uh, educate, advocate, and agitate for renewable energy, pure water, clean air, and a healthy and sustainable environment for future generations. Love you guys. Wonderful. There's also the Citizens Climate Lobby. Let's make environmental laws <laughs> to help reduce, uh, you know, carbon emissions. Um, so that's what the Climate Lobby does. And then I'm also, uh, I'm a member of, of Rotary where our, our Rotary Club is the Rotary Club of downtown Iowa City. And there are environmental projects that you can do really as a member of any Rotary Club. Ours has a particular environmental focus right now. I will say we have another solar panel project in the works. Um, so if you're interested in joining Rotary, please feel free to reach out to me. I've got my email address down here, hoffbree at yahoo.com. Also, you know, vote with your dollar, call right, ask for plastic free products. If you have plastic products that you wish they'd make a plastic free version, ask for them. Um, ask your favorite restaurants to please use compostable containers. I know Oasis already uses compostable takeout containers or better yet, bring your own so you don't have to use a container. And then also um, consider asking your favorite stores to carry plastic free products that you'd like to see. Uh, just a few days ago, I asked Pioneer Co-op if they would please look at a plastic free um, version of dental floss. I requested the um, dental lace that I showed you. Also consider giving plastic free gifts. So, some of the plastic free products are more expensive than the conventional ones. And so giving them as gifts is a great way to help kind of reduce that cost for people and also just, you know, encourage them to go plastic free. It also helps support environmentally friendly businesses. So some of my favorite uh, plastic free gifts, stocking stuffers, toothbrushes are great for stocking stuffers. Dental, uh, dental floss and refills are always in my kids' stockings and they appreciate those. Shampoo and conditioner bars are great. Silicone bags can be a little bit pricey, but they're a really nice alternative to plastic. Um, so those are nice presents. Beeswax wraps, the foaming hand soap that we talked about is a great gift. And also um, 
the the leafshave.com has a really really nice razor that has no plastic and you buy the razor blades that are fully recyclable um it costs i don't know it's like 90 or 100 dollars so that's kind of steep um but you know it's for life and it makes a great gift especially you know for teenagers who are just starting to shave so there's some ideas Think about shopping, uh, reducing your plastic when you shop locally. New Pie has a lot of plastic-free and reduced plastic products. You can uh, take your own containers. You get them weighed before you put things in them. And then you fill them up with whatever it is that you're buying. They have a bulk section. They also have, you can grind your own peanut butter. And then when you go through the checkout, they'll just take that off your, the price of your, uh, take the weight of your container off the price. Um, they also have milk and nut milks and oat milk in glass jars that are to have a $2 deposit. Um, so that's another really nice plastic. Uh, it's, it's not quite plastic free because there's plastic lids on them. Um, but it's, it's reduced plastic and the glass is better for your health. If you shop at hy V, I um, I take, um, I take a container with me and after they've weighed my meat on the, on the paper, I ask them to stick it in my own container. And then I take the sticker that they would have stuck on the, on the plastic bag. And I put that on the outside of the canvas bag. So I put everything in a canvas bag, put the stickers on the outside. And then when I go through the, uh, the checkout, I just tell them everything in my bag has stickers on the outside. They just go beep, 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 beep. And they often thank me. <laughs> so, um, so that's a really nice option at hy V. And then last, if they offer you, ask you if you want a receipt, just say no. <laughs> a lot of receipts are printed on thermal paper, which is actually plastic, and it's very, very bad for your health. The chemicals from thermal paper will leach through your skin in just a matter of minutes. So it's really actually unhealthy to touch those thermal papers. Just say no to that plastic. Okay, so next we'll talk about microplastics. So we talked about before plastics don't decompose. They will degrade into small particles called microplastics that are now found in nearly every ocean animal. And they're also found in our soil, our water, and even our air. They attract and store other toxins. They cause inflammation, endocrine issues, lower fertility, cancer, and neurological damage in fetuses and children. Not good stuff. There's actually more microplastics on the ocean floor, somewhere between nine and 15 million tons than there is floating on the surface of the ocean, which is really surprising. And uh, this is a picture I took on a beach in Hawaii. You see the little flecks of blue and green here. Those I believe are probably from lids. Um, they look like, you also see a lot of lids on the beach, um, but just it's, uh, microplastics are just everywhere. It's, it's actually pretty sad. However, the number one cause of microplastic pollution is actually your laundry, which is surprising. Scientists estimate that 35% of microplastic pollution is caused by synthetic microfibers, which makes textiles, basically things made of cloth, the largest source of microplastic marine pollution. 60% of the material in, in textiles worldwide is made of synthetic materials, which is plastic. Uh, some of the common names, if you look at the, at the label on your clothes, if you see polyester, rayon, spandex, acrylic, microfibers, those are all plastics. And then what happens when we wash and dry our clothes is that those, um, those fibers get shed in the, in the water, they get shed in the air. Um, and then looking at um, like what's, what are the worst shedders? Um, if you if you look at your clothing that maybe is made of a of a synthetic material, if it's smooth and flat, it's actually going to shed fewer fibers than things that are fluffy and soft, like fleece. Fleece is one of the worst microplastic shedders. Um, the other thing that we know is that new clothes shed more microplastic fibers than old clothes. So the more you wash them. Um, of course, <laughs> not that you want to wash them and shed the fibers, but, but the older they are, the less, the fewer fibers they're going to shed. So you might think to yourself, well, why don't I just use natural fibers like cotton? 
Well, unfortunately, they also cover natural fibers with chemicals. <laughs> so even shedding natural fibers can be polluting. So how can we minimize our pollution when we do our laundry? The first thing is to do full loads whenever possible. What they found is that one of the biggest contributors to shedding, aside from the type of material in the, that your garment is made of, is the volume of water relative to the amount of clothing. So extra water means extra shedding. Um, so avoid the delicate cycle when you can, because although it's gentle, it tends to have more water. Also using front-loading machines, front-loading machines tend to use less water. So if you can, uh, when you replace your washing machine, think about looking at a front-loading machine. And then you might consider, um, they're starting to have now water filters for your washer. There's not a lot of agreed on standards for rating these water filters and um, buying and installing them can be tricky. So if you're gonna try to use one of these filters, make sure that you read a lot of the reviews to see which ones people have had issues with. There's also things that you can use. Uh, there's a Cora ball, which traps some of those microfibers in it. And then there's a guppy bag that also, you put your clothes in this guppy bag and you zip it up and it traps some of the, those microfibers. The problem with these two things is that, yes, they trap the microfibers, but then you have to clean them out. And, you know, so you have to clean them out. You have to get it into the garbage. You can't rinse them because the minute you rinse them and that water goes down the sink, you've just put the microfibers back in the water supply, right? So you got to clean them without rinsing them. And they themselves are plastic and they're not recyclable. So, so I, I think your best option is just to try to minimize the amount of fibers that you're shedding. So now it turns out that drying is even worse than washing. Uh, drying can release up to 40 times more plastic microfibers than washing does. And they can go directly into the air. Um, so they can go directly into the air, you know, for, through the exhaust. They can also end up in your lint filter. So um, if you can reduce the amount that you dry your clothes, like hang them if possible, not only are you going to reduce the amount of fibers that your clothing is shedding, but you're also going to, hey, you're going to save electricity, which is awesome. And you're going to lengthen the life of your clothes. Uh, also, if you do um, empty your lint trap, remember that a lot of the stuff in your lint trap is going to be those microfibers. It's toxic. Throw it in the garbage. Do not put it in your compost. Some places say you can compost lint. Don't do it because you're essentially putting those microfibers into the soil because that's where compost ends up. So, so don't do that. So just kind of a summary here of reducing microplastics in your laundry limit purchase of new clothing if you can you know if you consider buying some clothes used from stuff limit washing hey could you wear your clothes a couple times or twice before you wash it maybe if you didn't have a really busy day hang your clothes to dry if you can and when you replace your washer opt for a front loading model if you can and then always try to wash full loads and avoid the delicate cycle Other things that you can do, um, pick up litter when you can, because as plastic outside is exposed to the elements, um, that's when you're going to see those microplastics get into the soil and the water. Um, so whenever you can, pick up litter. Um, join and adopt a highway litter cleanup if you can. And last, I just want to just remind you that even though sometimes environmental efforts really feel overwhelming, just remember that you can make a difference. And, you know, if you think about every American, if every American uh, just reduced their plastic usage by 10% a year, so currently the average American throws away 110 pounds of single-use plastic every year, that's two pounds a week. If 10% if we reduced our plastic usage by 10%, that would be 3 billion pounds a year. So I just wanna stop and pause and ask, what's one thing that you can think of that you might do in the, in the coming week or month that you could do to reduce your own plastic footprint? Thank you, Brianna. That was very, very detailed and involved. And uh, I have some of those things already in print, but maybe I can get some of the other things and then send them out to people on email. Absolutely. If that, if that yeah, would, be, 
Yeah. I'll send you my slides. Okay, that's great. Thank and then you. I can do that. Um, then we have some questions and comments here. Okay, great. Uh, and if people want to donate to the 100 grannies, the address is on the, uh, the chat for the books in the schools. Um, okay, Becky Ross says, I, I think plastic film also includes plastic wrap. Do you know if that's true? The, um, the film on what, Becky? Um, so we like, like saran wrap or, you know, the plastic wrap that you can put over things. I think that's if you wash it and I wash mine and reuse it. <laughs> I put it back, I, I wrap it back around a, a wooden um, rolling pin that I rarely oh, right. use. And so then I just reuse it. But I do think it's recyclable because it's stretchy. It is stretchy. I haven't seen that on the list. Um, I would have to ask the people at, at Iowa City Recycling. Um, I don't know for sure. I haven't seen that on the list, but it is stretchy. So I would think I, so. I know Jane Wilts pretty well too. I'll ask her too. So great. Yeah. And she's going to be on our last granny session too. So yeah. Oh, yeah. super. Yeah. She and, um, and Jane. Earth Breeze does not seem to have uh, polyvinyl. Do you know? Earth Breeze, I believe, does. You have to look at the ingredients. It's either listed as PVA or polyvinyl alcohol. Uh, I believe Earth Breeze is the one that I checked, uh, or it may have been True Earth. If you've checked Earth Breeze and it doesn't have polyvinyl alcohol, then thumbs up. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to check that myself. There's one of the laundry sheets that that says that it's so environmentally friendly, and I looked at the ingredients and I was like, yeah, but it's got the polyvinyl alcohol. And I have to give a shout out to Woe Nelly because I'm the one that mentioned that to you. They send it to you in the canisters. There's just powder in there. And then you just take this little bitty scoop and put it in your washer. And mm -hmm. that's that's all you do. And it lasts forever. And if you, she just moved from Iowa City to Nevada, I think out West. But if you order like $25 worth, the shipping is free. They used to have Woe Nelly at the co-op. But I think now some people aren't carrying it anymore since since um, she moved out of town. She used to live up on Juniper Street in mm. Iowa City. So, but I would I would um, commend her. Well, Nelly, it's a it's a very small little company, personal company. Um, packaging is compostable too. I looked that up, yeah. and, it, and it, the refill packaging is compostable. So, yay, oh, thumbs up for Well, Nelly. Yeah. And all those zillions of containers, the clamshells, Brianna, drive us crazy. Uh, they are not recyclable. You can't buy spinach, you know, well, spinach comes in a bag. I don't know if you can, you can get, recycle those bags, but I mean, almost everything comes in plastic of some kind or another. Yeah, it's tough. And those clamshells are just terrible. It's, straw, it's berries and, and fruit and vegetables and and even co-op has to use those too. So I don't know what the answer is for that. Grow your own. <laughs> it's, uh, it's tough. It really is tough. Um, I, I, use, I take those clamshells from the, from the vegetables and I reuse those for produce from my garden and I reuse them until they fall apart. Yeah, um, but, yeah. but it is tough. I mean, there's, there's a lot of places that we just, we don't have many options. So yeah. you do what you can do. Yeah. And the styrofoam drives me crazy too. Styrofoam um, is the worst, the it, worst, the worst, the worst. By far the worst. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking steps to address that at restaurants. And um, we were just at, at a community, did a uh, fundraiser up at our Redeemer and they were using styrofoam cups mm -hmm. for coffee. And so we're gonna email to uh, community and to the church and and say compostable cups next time and take them to them so um my husband said my i can't go back to the table with one of these cups do you have do you have a ceramic cup and she went to the kitchen and got a ceramic cup <laughs> yeah but everybody else veronica has a question you're muted now i'll read the rest of them Um, uh, in, in the meantime, I'll read some more. Um, 
She wanted the first slide. And so I'll be sending those in emails about plastic. Um, Rare Bird soap shampoo that is fragrance free. I don't know if it's fragrance free. Uh, it's a very, very mild fragrance if it's not fragrance free. Okay. I'm very sensitive to strong fragrance and I have no problem with the Rare Bird Soap Shop. Okay. Print version. Um, fashion industry is awful for plastic use. Shop secondhand. Yeah, we talked about that. That's good. Thought rayon was made of cellulose from wood. Um, am I wrong? Mm. I, I got these out of an article about plastics. I may be wrong. You may be right. Um, it may be that it's a combination. Maybe that it's partially synthetic and partially natural. That, that's a good question. I'll have to double check that. Thank you. From wood as is viscose, B-I-S-C-O-S-E. Hmm. I, okay. I don't know what that is. Um, fully plastic, but paper towel. I've seen that America uses more paper towels than the rest of the world combined, probably. Who gives a crap has yeah. paper has towels paper wrapped towels. in paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Newspaper film, um, you mean the bags around the newspaper? Yes. I think. Now, yesterday at the high V, I I saw that they have their recycling bin right as you go in the door. They take the newspaper bags, they take the, the plastic bags and they take one more thing of plastic, but they don't take any of these other things that you were talking about with them. Um, uh, they don't take the, the wrappers for the water bottles. I mean, if we could just redo those, that water bottle stuff drives me crazy. Yeah. Um, people have containers like this. <laughs> they have <laughs> containers around. Right. Just put water in there. Yep. Um, any other, let's see, AeroVental has heat proof paper cups. Oh, great. Good. Thank you, Sonia. And white. <clears throat> yes. I think that's what uh, Starbucks was using yesterday when we got Tom a coffee up at uh, hy V. And those oh. are all compostable now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fantastic. Any other questions here? Um, when I ran out of paper, paper plastic bags, Hy-Vee told me I could get some from the recycle if I needed some. <laughs> Can I? Plastic I, bags? <laughs> I want to speak up. Um, one of the things I do is, is say I don't buy, I haven't bought a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag or whatever for years. Right. If one comes into my house, I wash it and reuse it. But I also use like any the bags that come in a cereal box or any, mm -hmm. you know, those plastic bags. I use those and I use a little clip on those. Um, see if I got one here in my drawer. Just like this. Little, yes. Oh, the yeah, those are great. Mm -hmm. to close yeah. the top of it. And I use those all the time. And I just have a little bin in my cupboard that I put them in. I never so thought I of that. That's yeah. an awesome idea. I'm going to start yeah. doing that. <laughs> yeah, Becky gave us a talk last year at this time. And mm -hmm. that's that's who I got the information from, from the, yeah, the cereal bags. If you get like bread at the new pie and it's in a paper bag, you can just put it in one of those cereal bags and just, right? Right. Put Thanks. the clip on it. Super. Yeah, Becky did a lot of uh, research. Any other information you have this year, Becky? No, I think um, Brianna's given me lots of new information. And, you know, I, at the, when she spoke at our meeting, I, I was so upset about the plastic or the plastic that's in those dry or the laundry sheets because I thought, oh, this is perfect. But now I'm going to start buying the tablets. I just. <laughs> yes, I, I'm going to too. <laughs> They just don't tell you everything. Yeah. They make you think they, the, the commercials where they make you think, Hey, this is, this is great. This is good for the environment. Mm, right. Not so much. <laughs> no. Well, I'm going to use, I think they're good for travel. 
it does say this says that they're cruelty free and vegan. This is the Earth Breeze thing here, but uh, I don't know. Um, um, I, you're right. I have to look online. Yeah. So uh, Feather Lacey told me if cups are just paper, Jane told me that the Starbucks are not recyclable. It depends on whether they are just paper or whether they have a plastic lining to them. A lot of paper cups have plastic lining. So you have to be yeah. kind of careful. Yeah. Um, I When I have done things with compostable cups, I have actually bought compostable cups. And then, you know, they don't have that plastic lining. And it says that on there. Yeah. I, and recyclable I, is different than yeah. So yeah, the big difference is that things that what you can recycle is generally clean paper. Like if you get a pizza box and it's got grease and oh, cheese yes. on it, you can't recycle that greasy, cheesy right. pizza box, but you can compost it or you can tear the clean lid off and recycle the clean lid and then compost the dirty bottom. Right, right, right. Oh. We're lucky in Iowa City because we have three options. <laughs> I was he's great. Yeah. I sneak my stuff into my mother's compost. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we have so much space to share. We might as well share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Great. Any other? Any other questions or? Do you use paper bags at all? High V paper bags, Brianna. I do. Um, during the pandemic, when I was getting groceries, I mostly got paper bags. I did end up with some plastic bags, uh, but mostly, mostly paper is what I used. Yeah. So now I have a supply of paper bags. <laughs> well, the community will have them, but it's a bit of a problem getting, you know, down there, mm -hmm. making, making the, the run. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so many canvas bags hanging on hooks and things. I mean, a lot of yes. those. Yeah. You have to get them back into your car. That's the thing. And I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, I, if I take two, two bags, I needed three. If I take three, I needed four. <laughs> yeah. Take a little one in your purse. <laughs> yeah. ramp up. What about dentists, uh, Brianna, that are handing out these toothbrushes and these teensy little plastic things of floss? I scold I mean, them every time I'm there. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I've I've told my dentist at University of Iowa, hey, can't you give out like bamboo toothbrushes and you know find an alternative for this dental floss? So they get a lot of times. I think they get them either cheap or free. I'm not sure. Oh, from but, P and G. Right yeah. Here in town. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, and I'm not sure if that's the reason, but um, yeah. So, so when you go to your dentist, just say no to the plastic toothbrush and dental floss. I never take those anymore. Well, I use an electric toothbrush anyway. A lot of people do. They're mm -hmm. better for your gums. So um, yeah, but the dental floss was something new for me. And so I'm going to try that at the co-op. And what do they, what does dental lace put on it instead it's, of for wax? What veg, a vegetable wax? It's a, yeah, it's a plant-based wax. And they don't have that yet at, at the co-op. I've asked them to carry it. They do have something else at the co-op and I'm not really sure what it's made of. And I'm not really sure. So the dental lace is all compostable. When you floss your teeth with it, you can drop it in the compost because it's all plant-based, uh. it's all decomposable. The stuff that they have at the co-op that is not sold in a plastic box, I, I actually don't like it. It's It hurts my teeth. It's too big. Um, and, and, and so I haven't really looked into what it's made of, whether it's compostable or not. Uh, but I've, I hope they will carry dental lace at some point in the future. Good to know about dry cleaning bags. Yes, that's yes. what they say at the high V. That was a third. Um, that was a third plastic bag they would take. Um, oh, great, Sonia. Oh, dry clean. I don't do dry cleaning. Well, uh, no, you know, well, the dry cleaning bags and the paper bag and the uh, plastic bags from groceries and the newspaper bags. Those are the three things uh -huh. that you can put in. And then, like Brianna said and Jane says, they actually turn that into um, things that they use for construction yeah that's interesting 
I know. Yeah. I try to write, put things in the in wrap blankets and things like that in dry cleaning bags, but um, uh, I'm glad to know about that. I missed that before or I forgot it or something. So what do we do with the star foam in town? Yeah. There's, there's the garbage. I don't think there's anything you can do with it. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a group that Jane Wilsh is working with the, the restaurants. And eventually the 100 grannies are going to help disseminate some of that information, I think, when she's ready. Okay. But um, just the production of, of uh, number six star foam should be off the market totally. That will it never, should. ever go away. It breaks up into those little microplastics so easily. It's terrible stuff. I just yeah. avoid it whenever you can. Yeah. Yeah. I If I'm in a restaurant and I haven't taken uh, my own container, I'll ask them if, and maybe this is, it's, I think it's better than plastic. It may not be. I ask them if they just have foil to wrap it in or. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. So foil, if you take foil, you can take it home, wash it off crumple it into a ball and throw it in your recycling. Right. 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 Or use again. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that's what it, one thing I do. Um, but I try to take, I have some nice little, they're probably plastic too, but they fold over with Velcro and, and, you know, you can wash those and reuse them multiple times. And I have some other, the metal stainless steel type little boxes and things that I take. Oh, great. Yeah. And beeswax <laughs> covers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super. Well, did we answer everybody's questions? Um, did you just say that you can recycle aluminum foil? Absolutely. Yes, you can, Alfreda. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You just get it cleaned, roll it up in a ball, and put it in your recycling bin. Oh, well, I certainly yeah. learned a lot today, but that's that's very <laughs> useful. Thank you. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. And Jane and um, Sarah do speaking of every month that you can sign up through the City of Iowa City website. So they have a whole hour at noon every month that they talk about some of these issues that this month is going to be electric vehicles. And we're going to cover that as well in the 100 grannies at the end of the month. Super. Yeah. But they talk about a lot of these things. The last one was wishful recycling. Yeah. That people thought that everything got recycled that they really threw in there, just like you mentioned, Brianna. And just throw everything in there and hope that it gets recycled and don't pay attention to it. 